Well, we're going to call this regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District to order. And I'll do a roll call. Uh, Joe Carroll. Here. Ben McNugle. Here. Paula Rodriguez. Here. Michael Stein. Here. I'm Nick Rico, Chairman. Um, we have excused absences from Summers and Jason Greenwood. All right. I am looking for a motion to suspend the rules to add another agenda item for electing the officers. So moved. Second. Second. Thank you, Paul. All in favor? All right. So next item on the agenda is election of officers. I'll entertain a motion for uh, approving the current slate of officers with Nick Rico as chairman, Paul Rodriguez as vice chairman, thank you, Joe, Bill Carroll as clerk, and Jason Greenleaf as treasurer. Motion to approve that slate of officers. Second. Thank you, Mike. Don't look at me, I can't vote. I know you can't. <laughs> All in favor? None opposed. Thank you. All right. Make my life easier. I won't have to change the website. <laughs> That's what my job is here for is to make Dave's life easy. <clears throat> anyway, um, approval of the minutes. I'll entertain a motion to approve them. Move to approve. Thank you, Paul. Second. Thanks, Ben. Any questions, corrections, comments, edits? Okay. Barring none, all in favor? Four, and I believe Mr. Terrell is abstaining because he wasn't here. You know me well. All right, uh, superintendent's report. You are, Dave. All right, copy of the uh, monthly report of operations. For the month of October is included in the packet. Our average total flow for the month was 1.3 million gallons today. Our optimal quality, again, was well within our permitted limits uh, with 97% uh, uh, BOD removal, 99% TSS removal with average concentrations of 7 and 3 million gallons. Copy of pump station flows for the month of October is also included in the packet. There, are, uh, there were some radio communication errors on the 12th and the 26th. And the cause of the high flow at pump station 26 was due to some construction activities. Um, the new generator for pump station 3 on Dunstan Road was installed and started up this past month. Uh, Josh Roy has developed a, a spec for the pipe material needed for the Route 114 force main project and did uh, do it tomorrow on the 19th. Uh, we met with Underwood to review uh, some equipment layouts with the dewatering upgrade project. Uh, we also met with Underwood and Maine Oxy to review proposed site layouts with a critical eye towards uh, oxygen delivery down at the, uh, the snow scanning road pump station. And just a reminder, the next regular monthly meeting will be held on December 16th, a week earlier uh, than usual due to Christmas. And a couple of other things I want to bring up that don't have my notes. Uh, we will be, uh, the district has joined the, uh, the sludge cartel. You call it that, I think. <laughs> I don't. Uh, Southern Maine Regional Biosolids. Of which Nick is part of them. There's 13 communities that are part of this um, uh, bid process to go out for sludge disposal to, uh, to get, try to get a better bid. Uh, we will be getting those bids in. Uh, what are they doing there? They're coming in the December. 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 Uh, and finally, on uh, Nick and I, along with uh, Steve Clifton from Underwood, will do doing a presentation on December 9th at the um, December 9th. 
business. There is none. New business. Uh, a copy of the draft personal rules and regulations have been provided to you. Uh, or had pre previously been set. And we have Betsy Olton here from HR Main Consulting who has drafted these rules. And she is here to answer any questions that you may have regarding what is being proposed in the application this year. And I guess I'd turn it over to you if you want to have uh, make a slight presentation. To oh, sure. Um, Any highlights? So, um, the highlights of the handbook. Um, so, I think how we came about, um, we were, I was looking um, with Dave at your old personnel rules and noticed that some things just needed to be updated. And so, just took this on to just make sure that we're all legal and compliant, and um, we work together as a group to determine um, whether our most of the benefits I think remained the same, other than some. Um, I think um, we we needed to make sure that we were complying with the earned paid leave law that's effective one one. So uh, some of those updates are here in the handbook, um, and I I did see a couple of questions that came across uh, via email. So. Um, yes, so I think one of the questions, I don't know if we want to just go through this. I don't know how you want to. You probably have to open it up to discussion. Uh, well, well I guess done. the way to do this is just we have a draft in front of us, and I'll entertain a motion to approve the draft, and then we'll get a second, and then we can discuss how to that. That would be the proper way to do Motion to approve the draft. Thank you, Pat. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> All right, now, now is the time for a discussion. Um, so, Betsy got this one. Questions emailed to her. If you want to start handling those first. Again, kudos to Paul for reading the whole document before coming to the meeting. I'm impressed with that. We'll get some time to uh, So, um, I think the first question you had was regarding the on-call um, duty pay, and so maybe you know I think we can talk through this maybe together with your input, Dave. I think the question was whether or not um, if the uh, so on the second paragraph of page, I don't know if we're all going to be on the same page or not, but let's see. Um, page four of 24 under weekend calling duty pay. Mm -hmm. um, so the last um, couple sentences of the second paragraph, uh, or the last sentence, I guess, if the employee answers and resolves the call in remotely, the employee will receive one hour overtime pay. I believe that's the question that you had. Um. Actually, if, uh, if, if we go to the, the last sentence of the first paragraph, um, oh, so cool. regarding uh, the, the, you're performing a plant check and a call comes in, the three hours of on-call and plant checks are included toward the call. And it just, I was just a little bit confused about how that's been interpreted, if that means that's whatever time it takes to Address the we're, call. We're, the last oh, weekend. Yeah. 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 Weekend. Weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, second last last to last paragraph, last, paragraph, last sentence. Yeah. So, right out of the weekend call, and the employee, at, at, if employees are at the plant performing a plant 
check when a call comes in. The three hours of on-call and planned checks are included toward the call. Uh, in other words, and we certainly can clarify that, um, if they're able to get the address the, the on-call, the, the alarm during that three hour period, there's no additional time that they you know, get toward, get paid for. If it goes above another hour, um, they would, or two hours or three hours, whatever the time may be, they would get compensated for the entire time that they're, they're present there. But if they're, in, if they're there anyway, doing work and an alarm comes in, they're already there. It was the, the reason for it. And if you had a question concerning it, obviously I think we need to just probably address that sentence and make it a little clearer. Yeah, that was, it was really just a, just a point of clarification is because it's, it's, it, it left me a little confused sure. as to whether it was going to be you know, in addition to, or as you said, Dave, if you're there, you can address the call within the, the two mm -hmm. hours that you're you're there, then it's, yeah, it might just be a better way to say yeah, that. Yeah, sure. that would be a better yeah. word to call. Yeah, yeah. Do that. no, they, you know, <laughs> that's in there because this has come up. <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, so it's saying there's not double pay, essentially. Basically, yes. So you, you, know, you don't get five automatic. hours if you're home in two. Right. Just right. because you were on at the plant and you did all your stuff and the alarm came in and you know. right. it takes you three hours to do the call, you have to go back and do your checks, get another hour or whatever the case may be. You get the time that you're actually I mean I think we all understand what the wording is, but for yeah. better points of clarification. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Question for the superintendent. Does the crew understand what that means? Well that's that's the reason why we're going to clarify it. That's what, how we have been operating. That's what I mean. That, yeah. That's how it's been. That's how we yes. have been right. operating. Yep. Um, but the question's come up. The, it has come up, and we had staff changes that will be arbitrary. And I think some of, you know, a lot of what's in this handbook as well as what what you've been doing currently. Yeah. It just hasn't been memorialized um, in an updated document. Yeah. So. We'll make sure that's clear. And then the, I think the only other question that you have, Paul, is about the education reimbursement. Um, oh. no. Go on. Oh. I'm good. Which is? Uh, that would be page six of twenty-four. Yeah, under educational yeah. benefits. And I think there was maybe some we need to clarify, or maybe. I wasn't sure if we need clarification here or you were looking for to um, sort of add an additional benefit. Right, right. So a little bit of both. Okay. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> so in the, the second paragraph that starts upon approval, um, if you go to the last sentence, the last sentence um, speaks to educational training that's not job related. And the last part of that sentence says, not job related, but which is an institutional requirement for an overall job related degree or certification program, and then that that sort of um, certification or, or, or degree would be reimbursed at, at a 75 percent rate. Um, so it just it I was just intrigued by that. I'm not sure how that's been interpreted in the past, but it seems like we're speaking to something that someone wants to you know get another degree or certification that's related to what we do in our industry but might not be specifically related to their current job and so the phrase the phrasing of um, institutional requirement just I wasn't sure what that really what we really meant by that and yeah my thought was we want to support that and you know if, if that's led to some inflexibility maybe that are making it a little bit more. Well, what if, a, what if an entry level operator decided to go to engineering school? Is that is that what we're talking about here? Yeah, I think it's, I yeah. think that's a perfect example. Okay. Right. But it's not required for their job. It's it's something that would they, they may not get to that level where they're gonna have that job, but they want to further their education and it has some relative relation to it. Um, and, 
And this is, I don't think this has been something that's been your current practice. No, I think the, this is something that you brought in. Correct. And so I see a lot of different um, iterations of this, um, depending upon what your districts or your municipalities want to provide for your employees. And so, um, you know, we can, I think we can talk about that. It's just that this seemed to be, what happens sometimes is people will come in and want to, you know, get a four-year degree. And, um, you know, although you want to, you know, encourage education, the other piece is the budget part of it. And then, um, you know, you can, you can certainly, you know, slice that a few different ways. But that's what the meaning of that piece was. So essentially, as long as it's tangible within the work scope, not necessarily of your current job description, but of the really profession. Did. Yeah, of the profession, right. Um, but uh, more of a question towards you. Currently, based on this, we do not have, we have a line item, but it doesn't really reflect if somebody wants to take advantage of that. And, well, I mean, and we won't until we understand that. I yeah. understand. Um, I just want to make sure that we're not looking at that from our previous workshop. No, no. Um, this is, you know, we have a line item for trouble meeting educations, and, you know, the district has always encouraged staff going even before me uh, to, to, to get whatever education they needed to do their job, and it's always fully funded. And this is, it never, never been really, again, memorialized in any type of employee campaign. And so this is really what this was doing. You know, you know uh, so we've always paid 100% of going to uh, conferences. Yep. Classes. Classes and those type of things. And it's one of those things that we have to manage you know, or limited staff. Yeah, no. They uh, all can't go. I think this is a great addition to Port Boy. Um, because we have a really good tight knit family and we try to grow people within positions to stay there. You know, and I think of Scott, you know, coming to the lab and, you know, you know, people trying to move up, you know, they came in at entry level positions and for us to support them to stay within our, within our organization is great. So I, I totally support this, there's no question about that. But I think that was a relevant question. So. My only Question, concern, comment is, is you know, as a super, the superintendent, whoever that may be, needs to have the authority to say, no, you can't go to that. And I guess the way I read that, that's in here. Yeah. Uh, you know, because in this area we have Nuia, uh, whatever it's called now, um, down in Boston once a year, and you can't have 12 employees going to throw it all at once. <laughs> No, and you have that discretion, and I think yeah. um, also in the, you know, <clears throat> in the job market that we're experiencing right now, um, this is a this is a really popular benefit that has sort of crept up in the last, I would say, I a couple of years. Totally just we just yeah, and and I guess I was going to read to my next question, which is probably more appropriate for you, is should we kind of identify what those discretionary parameters are? So we don't end up in our own HR problem, like, like so, like I don't like you. Or versus um, the other part of it is, if I'm going to turn around and send you for your bachelor's degree in engineering, um, then you know, like, you're going to work for me for five years. You know, something like those things. Are those or things you or reimburse us for those costs if you leave right after you get the degree. Yeah. Right. Um, are those things we should consider in this in, in this, this section? I mean, like. For example, in my other life, uh, when I went to paramedic school, I had to sign a contract for five years of yep. service. If not, I had to pay them like that. Yeah. You know, um, I totally support uh, any of our staff like getting their PE, uh, but at the same time, I don't want us to pay for their PE and then um, see, see you. Yeah. Go to Wells. Go, go to Wells. <laughs> and then, you know, I was thinking Wells. I'm glad you said that, actually. <laughs> So that would be a piece that, you know, it, the, an internal sort of process that, you know, when somebody is interested in this uh, benefit that we would go through. And there, you know, I don't think that I provided that to you, but there's like a contract that you would sign, or not a contract, but a form, and, and there's a process associated with it. Um, 
I really didn't see that as part of the handbook. Yeah, I, I think so too. Uh, or at least that outline. Uh, reference I, I would, to it. I would maybe reference the process, sure, but I would put as little as needed in there beyond what we already have. You know, sure. I mean, really. I might need process. Yeah. Like. Identify the process in the handbook and have that process laid out separately. And the HR contract with the, the organization. Or maybe even put the form in as an appendix. Yep. That would yeah. be the way to do it. Because, you know, someone could say, Dave, I'm I'm like, go, I want to go to Maine College of Art and get my art degree. Okay. You know, and it would be up to his discretion whether or not it's 75% of the materials and books. But in, but in that case, yeah, that's not job related. That's what Pam Miro's all and, and that's but just it, you know. An, an 18 year old could get a job in, to, in order to get put through engineering school. And I mean, that's a situation that could realistically happen. We'd have to decide how to handle that. That, that would right. be an expensive reimbursement. It would be an expensive reimbursement. It would also be a long process because it would be doing it at night. Right. right. Uh, <laughs> and, to require five years after that, I don't know. I, I wouldn't feel very comfortable. Yeah, with that. Five years is a long time, especially for for an engineer being an operator. And the younger generation, let's uh, you know, honestly, like they don't necessarily. That, no. I can say it. I can say whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> but the reality is, I can't. But the reality is that you know. The studies have been that they're here for more experiences than longevity in a lot of these careers, and so I, I do think five years is a little steep, but we could come up with no, something. No, no, five years is definitely steep, I think, yeah. in this current job market, this current yeah. generation. The loyalty to a company to be there for 25, 30 years is not what we are once in, <laughs> basically what you're, I think you're trying to say. But, I mean, there should be an expectation if we're going to turn around and yeah. spend 10, 20,000 dollars on somebody. Yeah, I believe in sign up bonuses and paying people for their worth and their investment in the organization, but we should look at what that looks like. And depending on your budget too, some other organizations will just give a, you know, I, I know there's, you know, 12 or, right, 12 employees essentially, but some other organizations will um, set limits per employee. So if you had two or three right. people that were interested in it, maybe you'd have a dollar cap at what a credit amount would be, you know, you per use the, that right. Like the USM rate um, per credit and up to a, a dollar amount per employee, or you know, there's all kinds of ways to sort of yeah. look at that. But um, yeah, as, long, as long as we have some flexibility, because you know, 98 percent of the time this is going to work fine. But you get one kid that decides he wants to go to engineering school, and then there's somebody else that says, "Hey, he's getting ten thousand dollars a year to go to engineering school. I want to do that." Then a third employee does. We could get in a little bit of a pickle. If we let the first one do it, then all of a sudden the second well, one wants to do it. We're going to have a budget for that. Yeah. Right. Right. I, I'm supportive of it, but I think you're right. Yeah. Maybe I mean, you had some safeguards. Yeah. I think, um, this is all yeah. Good, good conversation. Right. And then through the budgeting, you know, maybe that's where we, you know, like you say, allocate what uh, amount of money is available. That's going to limit. And that would the, mean, you know, I think, towards the discretionary aspect from the superintendent is. Yeah. I have $30,000 a year based on professional development. And how that's divvied up is kind of a first come, first serve, or seniority basis, or however he wants to do it. You know, we have all these classes, which we know take some 10000 and if you guys want to go to a PE school, great. I have 20 other grand to do it. But beyond that, you know, I'm tapped out this year. Uh, something to look at. You know, and it could also be a timing thing. You, know, you can't take a full load of engineering class and work full time. It's just not exactly. I'm not doing it. You know, so I don't think you'd be spending the money on it once anyway. So. All right, I think those are all good things that we can look at if we can address some of those issues. And I don't want to belabor it, but can we back up for a second? Sure. Go back to page four. Uh, one thing I noted when I was kind of going through, just uh, it was more of a language thing, I think, but I just kind of clarification under weekend call duty pay. Um, in the last paragraph, when it talks about an employee will receive a minimum of two and one half hours 
two hours overtime pay. So are you saying they get double time and a half for up to two hours, and then after that, the two hour minimum, they'll be compensated just at an overtime rate? Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. So yeah. should that be? So they two. get the, the you know, if they get called in, they get two hours on that. Two hours automatically, two, two and a half times they don't rate. Yes. That, that was kind of, but I was like, are you saying they get it, double time and a half for two covered. hours? Wait, it does say, so, receive a minimum of two and one half, two and one half. Right, that's what I'm saying. It's right. They get double that's time and a half the for two hours, the and then time and a half to after right. two hours. Right. right? Is that what you wanted to say? Two hours. Double time and a half two, for two, two hours, yes. plus time and a half after two hours? No, I think, it, I, think it, I, th I think the two the number two the needs number to be two two needs to be two point five. Two point five. That's where the Okay. Good good catch. Because I was yeah. looking at that as like I'm gonna get double time and a half for up to two hours and after two hours I'll get time and a half. That's the way I read it. No, that's not the way it works. I mean that's great. But <laughs> that's kinda how I read it. <laughs> no, good catch. Okay. I <laughs> Sign me up. Right on my current contract. And send about 15 alarms while you're doing your plan check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's never been done. Speaking of the plan check. how that happens when I'm on call. Uh, the paragraph above talks about plan check on weekends. Yeah. Two hours per weekend and an additional two hours on a holiday. Is that meaning that you have two hours on a weekend and then if it's a weekend and a holiday, you get two extra hours? No, what it means is if you have Labor Day weekend, you get two for Saturday, two for Sunday, two for Monday. That's what that means. If the that's holiday that falls on... I understand what that means, but that's not what this is. It's saying that you have two hours on a holiday, excuse me, two hours on a weekend, and two hours additional on a holiday. So Which if it falls on a Saturday or Sunday, and two hours additional on top of the two hours on the weekend. No, it says two additional no. hours Probably. per weekend. Okay and two additional hours on a holiday so to make that clear what we would do is we would say but the weekend says holiday but the preface holiday. says plan checks on weekends right that's why i mean you need to say plan check on weekends and holidays and that's, simple, that's what i'm saying simplify that's plan checks on is. plan checks on weekends and holidays you get weekends, two additional hours yes we can do a little um, example too you saying that? I would have gone for four hours on that one. And, and the reality, so, you know, these are, this is great, a great discussion, but the reality is that Dave's the superintendent, and if somebody is trying to reinterpret something, or it's, finagle the bagel. Right, it's, you but know. I think we're at a point, sorry. No, nope, that's I apologize. it. That's it. We've been very fortunate to have a, a very historical staff, but we're starting to see changes. And for what, how we've operated versus how we are operating may not be, we're just going to start now seeing those growing pains. I think is kind of where we're, you know. Well, I mean, and this is. Our tenure is really good, but we're one of the very few right now that have great tenure in our staff. I would agree. I'm going to hang out, right? <laughs> yeah, she didn't have a choice. <laughs> I mean, we gotta wait till these to the Dallas project gets done. <laughs> and part part of this too, honestly, is like Sorry. when you onboard a new employee, you're gonna go through this handbook. You're not gonna hand the handbook to somebody and say sign it and agree to it. Um, it's not a contract. It's a it's a fluid document that may get changed based upon what you folks, um, you know, decide budgetary wise or whatnot and. It's also an opportunity to sit down and say, this is what this means, and ask clarif clarifying questions, and um, you know that everybody's being treated fairly and consistently, with some discretion based upon you know first come first serve because you can't send twelve people to serve. You know what I mean? So it's all, yeah. it's a it, it, Dave has enough discretion to be able to um, follow this and make sure that everybody understands the interpretation for it. You know because. Even if you spell it out the right way, somebody always comes up with, there's always somebody that has that other. There's always oh, is he one of them? Right, perception. And for those people, perception is reality. <laughs>
<laughs> and that's where he goes back in the morning. I think those are my questions. Questions yeah. for Beth okay. and the uh, personnel policy. I just had one more, but I didn't want to. No, go ahead. Anyone else has anything? Um, so, uh, no, I think I think it's fair. I mean, I, I agree with the sentiment that's that's been. I mean, we have great staff, and we, we want to be the employer of choice. I think, and I think that's what we've been striving to do. That's what I what I've seen since I've been here, and I think this is a great document. So I just wanted to say, yeah, thank you for for uh, for doing this and for updating it. Um, I was just curious if there were. You know, in the previous version of the document, were there any questions that folks tend to have on a regular basis or concerns that have been raised by the staff at all? Or mm -hmm. the, the general themes? No. Um, generally, no. And that's primarily a lot due to the longevity of the staff that we have had. Okay. And, and, you know, some of the, some of the you know, questions get taken care of amongst themselves. No, this is what we do. This is how we deal with it. Um, the staff kind of created the document in a lot of ways from history. Yeah, from history. Um, and, and, you know, it, it's it's like the playground, you know. It, you know, people, it, it gets, people so are, end up being fair because, you know, if they, somebody tries to get away with something, it, it gets corrected quickly. Yeah. Um, Very beneficial is self police currently. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Sorry. Well, I also think some of what we discovered in your, your current document was that you were doing, you know, you had a practice that you were doing regularly and consistently. It just wasn't. It, it didn't make it, it right, and it was outdated, and so For you example, updated it in your practice just not in the for example yeah. the being able to resolve an issue remotely yeah 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 yeah, yeah. you know yeah. all right we give you all this stuff so that you're able to do that and they get an they get they get charged an hour uh, or they get an hour versus having the jump in the truck come here and make them do it so you know you know these things have developed Matured. No, that's good. Glad to hear that. Yeah. No, it's a great update, and I, and I hope I offended by needling. I don't things. get offended by anything, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Yeah. But uh, it was a really they are longer than. It was an actually really good. She works really for Howard good. Carter, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually really good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Although next time, I think Betsy needs to sit this way. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Betsy. Thank you. Thank nice you to meet you all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Looks like a group gag. All right. So, um, lot 34, American Assisted Living Facility. Okay. And we have a real estate development and company. I will call our request district approval for the American House at the Downs and assisted living development located within the Downs parcel. Uh, the parcel is a 4.8 acre development located just north of the existing town center for residential development apartments and along Scarborough Downs Road in the crossroads plan development district. Okay. Uh, the proposed the 145 unit senior living facility includes parking spaces, outdoor courtyard areas, and associated walkways. Uh, the proposed unit breakdown includes 40 assisted living uh, units, 75 assisting uh, light units, 45, uh, 75 assisted living units, and 30 memory care units. Uh, the graphic that I provide I depicts previous phases of that development. Uh, the building will have three total sanitary exit points, a kitchen exit, and two residential exits, both located near the rear of the building. Along with the proposed sewer services, the proposed development will include a grease interceptor for the kitchen waste and a pump station for the sanitary flow. Uh, the anticipated wastewater flow for the development is estimated using the historical data of a similar uh, facility based on the data of over 45. Uh, and a half gallons per unit were used to calculate the new capacity of 6,600 gallons per day. I recommend approval with the following conditions. Um, flow limited to, to the 6,600 gallons per day. Um, the proposal is fully subject to capacity reserve fees. The current capacity reserve fee is 1838 gallons and is adjusted monthly based on the engineering and the record. This capacity reserve fee due is 121,000 uh, The approval is subject to completion of the district acceptance of public station in 2007. Uh, provide updated plans to the safety tenant that satisfactorily address uh, the peer review comments and the costs associated with the engineering and peer review will be paid by the With that, I will entertain a motion. And then we do have the item from uh, Coral Pala here. And I believe we have some graphics. Yeah, but we want to talk after the motion. Okay, sorry. So, motion with the superintendent's um, performance. Question for me. Second. Thank you. Man. All right. Groove, you mind introducing yourself and put up your graphic? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are you okay? Yes. Okay. I think the camera can see you. Thank you. Thanks. Well, thank you, Dave, for guiding with Coral Palmer, as you mentioned. Um, so I'm here on behalf of Red Coast, the real estate development company, uh, investment company. Um, they're actually nationwide. Um, they have facilities in Michigan and Florida, mostly and along the East Coast, and they have one that's being constructed right now, I believe, in New Hampshire, so this is actually their first facility in Maine, so um, you know, we welcome them in that respect, and they're really excited to be part of the Downs development here. Um, so as they mentioned, 145-bed assisted living facility um, in the Downs Town Center Residential District, so we're going to have one here. This is Scarborough Downs Road, where it's being constructed up to this point right here. This is Hackamore Ave along this, and this is actually a future front runner way. So, um, and this is going to be the start of the downtown area of the Downs. So it's kind of a unique site where they almost have four fronts. And it's been really challenging for us to try to figure out kind of you know, how the development looks um, unrelated to sanitary sewers, obviously. Um, so if you go out there today, you'll see these buildings down here actually constructed and occupied. So it's, uh, there's a trailer and there's actually some preloading dirt on the site right here is a form of parking lot essentially for the adjacent clubhouse, which is right here. Um, so as, as Dave mentioned, we have three sanitary sewer exits coming out. Um, basically because of the long wings here, we need three locations where the, our mechanical engineers could 
outlet uh, elevation or the dead over to the proposed uh, force main, or excuse me, the proposed gravity sewer main that runs actually through the site. So this was permitted, and this leads up to the pump station 27, which is next on your agenda. Uh, this was permitted previously as part of the third amendment of the town center residential subdivision, and we're proposing to connect to it right in the back here in the, uh, in the service area. Um, as Dave mentioned, we originally had proposed a grinder, inline grinder pump and working with the district. We're switching that to a grinder um, sewage pump station. Let me uh, just correct you, inline grinder. In, inline grinder, like a muffin monster sound. Mm -hmm. right. And I, I asked the pump station. Better, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So that's what we are in the middle of proposing and inspecting that pump station, which we will work with Dave on doing. Um, and any other details associated with Underwood's review and the district's review of it. Um, I can answer any questions. That's all that we have. Thank you. Any questions for the group? So, would that be a pump station just for this one facility? No, it would be a private pump station on for this site. one facility. The primary driver for that is the Santa, the, the personal wipes yep. that have become problematic in a lot of a lot of places, and it's but not necessarily with exactly, and it's not necessarily the staff. Uh, the staff can be an issue. Or the it's residents. Or it's, or family. It, it's family members. Yeah. It's family visiting, coming in, and taking care of their loved ones. Uh, they just don't understand, and they're not. Um, and, and, and wipes will get flushed down. This, uh, putting pump stations or some type of device, protection device, on these type of facilities has become common practice in our industry now. And um, I wanted to move away from the in-channel grinder system that they had originally proposed from because it is a system that, if it fails, it's specialty equipment that's gonna require uh, time to get the materials. Uh, can easily be removed out of the system and the, the material would bypass any type of screening. Whereas a pump station is something that people in the area are used to working on. You can get grinder pumps pretty much at any point in my house. And if it does fail, they have the storage facility and they can actually pump and haul if need be. Do we have a specific Manufacturer or anything like that that we are recommending, or no? Uh, I, I would just actually go with uh, some of the more popular ones, you know, like Barnes and CSPA, yeah, yeah. yeah. what's available in the area. Yeah. Sure. Just don't, you know, we're gonna get specific or not. That's something we okay. yeah. So, is the flow meter? The flow is not needed. We base our flow on the influent flow, uh, the, the water flow coming into the uh, Yeah. I did have a question. Oh, go ahead, Mike. You first. Um, do you take off like a certain percentage for consumptive use? No. 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 If they have ir you know, if they have irrigation, right. Right. they can have a sub meter. Yeah. Um, that we would do a deduct off yeah. of, or alternatively, in this case here, where they have a pump station, we can actually meet in the flow of the road to get that right. When you say something, right? you, you know, if you put 100 gallons of water in, into a house, is 100 gallons of water actually going to leave the house because you need some for cooking? for what, whatever. Um, and sometimes you, you can put a, a percent you know, reduction. I mean, the most I've, I've ever seen is 10%. Is yeah. okay. We have no interest in doing that. I think that hasn't been common practice. No, we've been and I don't think the district does it either. I think it's what it goes in, what goes out. It's all uh, incoming. You base it on unless there's a sub meter. At least that's what it was when I was at the district. Yeah, that's, that's my understanding. <laughs> I did have a question about the assisted living light units versus assisted living units. I'm not sure why I understand that. Uh, so that is the way of 
Um, we work with the town on definitions since this is not senior independent living. Um, honestly, it came down to growth management purposes and growth management ordinances for pulling um, those type of units, which is kind of Scarborough standard. So the assisted living light is, is a way to say closer to an independent living unit okay. than, a, than, a, than a dependent living unit. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So it's kind of the in between. I'll call it the assisted right. living light. It would be the in between of the memory care and the assisted living. Units. All right. Cool. And people there to help out, but they're not. Yeah, monitoring. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good to know. Thank you. Different code requirements. For those of us with the gray hair, we need to know that. <laughs> I'll be sure to give you a tour. I appreciate that. This All right. Barring none, <laughs> no other questions for Drew. I'll call for a vote. All in favor? None opposed. Thanks, Drew. Thank you very much, Drew. Once again. So, what's, what's the schedule of that new book? Uh, starting construction this time. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> 2020, 2023. I'm going to time to show you to your room. <laughs> You're up again. Uh, well, let's let Dave do that. Next one is the bump station, 27. On behalf of Cross Old Holman LLC, Laurel Holman, requested the Scarborough San Andreas to board the trustees and crew the well, the proposed pump station for us main use will service the towns in the north area in the downs. The innovation district, including pump station number 26, are part of the service area for this pump station. Ultimately, this pump station will discharge into a gravity manhole located on Tigus Parkway. The force main, will, um, force main and pump station will be transferred over to the district upon completion of the project. Uh, the proposed project includes one new oops, submersible. Um, Funny, it's the same pen. That's cute. Look at the name. Um, World's Fashion. Yeah. Uh, 10 foot diameter wet well, um, 260 horsepower pumps, uh, average flow of uh, 360,000 gallons per day with a peak design of 1.6. Uh, flow range of 390 to 1155 GPM and a total dynamic area of 36 to 99 pH. Emergency generator, BFP, scale controls, mag flow meter, radio communication, and a control board. And also a 2,180 feet of cadence diameter HTP. 2150 feet? 2,100. No, I recommend approval with the following conditions. Uh, I have plans to make this weekend for approval for any construction. Sewer extension permit will be required. A complete application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time of the permit is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no sewer work shall be completed. Uh, provide updated plans to the two superintendent that satisfactorily addresses the um, peer review comments and the costs associated with the peer review uh, shall be paid by the owner. All right, I'll entertain a motion for the project. Cool. Mm -hmm. to approve that submission by the superintendent. Thank you, Paul. Second. Thank you, Joe. All right, um, we have Drew here to present this project as well. You're up again. Thank you, Drew Gagne. I'm a Palmer. For everyone listening at home. Uh, so this is a nice colored plan I have for you here of what we're looking at with the, the sewer shed for this pump station. So just to orient everyone, I guess Parkway's over here on the left. Um, the Innovation District is up here right off the page. And the project we're just talking about is located right here. So the pump station location has been picked right here. It has to be centrally located to the downtown area. Um, I wouldn't get too excited about what's drawn here. This is really preliminary, um, more of a master plan schedule, but just kind of wants to show the density of what could be coming to the downs here. So this green dashed line is what I call a direct sewer shed, which would be the gravity line spider web network that we're going to create 
come back for in front of the board approval for it to the pump station. Um, and up here is the innovation district and pump station 26 right there. So you can see the force name is the blue and that's actually in and operating right now. Um, and so that's proposed to connect to the gravity line for this pump station now. That's going to take the flow from the innovation district as well as the flow from the project we just discussed, the flow from a previous project from a couple months ago, Hackmore Island Apartments down here, as well as everything in the future that's going to be coming to you guys in front of that. So really the plan is here is where it's been designed this way from pump station 26 to cut back the force main wherever the gravity line lives in these public roads that are hopefully publicly accepted sewer may never come in for it and we're going to eventually just keep cutting it back until the final design which is somewhere around here this force main will be permanent gravity main and then pumped out to highest parkway down over here so this is actually the same alignment that we have from the pump station 26 um, approval it follows the hall road which is right now our utility corridor for cmp as well it's really driving home past well it's pretty well built right now um, so we're going to be following that alignment going under the underneath Willowdale Brook and over up to here. Um, and I will grab just another sheet just to kind of zoom in here on the upside down. I'm upside down. <laughs> that might help. Thank you. So this is the pump station site plan right on this side. So we really just zoomed in. You can see the lot that we dedicated this from our sanitary district. Um, so the pump station house house control shed right here with the wet wall located over here. This is the incoming gravity line and as you can see we have two directions and actually a third direction that will be coming from. It's just stuffed out as we get through that network. Uh, the discharge piping will come from the wet wall of the submersible pumps combined into the force main within the building and then help put the building um, right up to Highgus Parkway. Uh, I'm sorry, combined with so we're combining the force mains above ground in the control shed. The two discharge pipings, two discharge pipes are coming out underneath and we're coming up through the slab, combining them into the above ground into the control shed. Um, this so is the building is a valve pit. Exactly, exactly, above ground valve pit. Yeah, right. to some degree. Yep. The end controls. Mm -hmm. What is the anticipation of the stub out? What's that? What is the anticipation of the stub out? Because gravity's coming in and you're dealing with the force mains. What is the anticipation of the stub up? This is for future growth? Yes, yes, for basically all directions following over up here. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. I thought that was already included. All right. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> nope, you're good. That's that's really all I have. I can answer any questions if you want. I know there's a lot of technical and a lot of stuff in your packages um, for you to read and take a look at. I'm happy to answer anything I can. Thank you. Questions for Drew. Or Dave. Or Dave. No, yeah. I, I, I have a question. What what's the anticipated um, time frame when this pump station will actually see the average to design flow? Is it five years out? Is it ten years out? I would imagine this is. I know this is a very well thought out as far as development in the downtown area. So I'm thinking five years. I think it depends on if you ask the owner or anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> different answers, but I think realistically, to actually, you know, from a permitting standpoint, I think it could be within the next five to ten years you could see everything. What's going to happen from an occupancy standpoint? Ten to fifteen years, I think. When we started this project uh, three years ago, now I think the anticipated build out was around twenty years. So we're three years in, and I'd say we're probably ahead of schedule to, for the most part. So seeing these actual flows. I would anticipate 10 to 15 years to see most of it. And, and speaking of towards the actual flows, and I, uh, the innovation district is probably a good indicator of that. The design flows per lot that they anticipate that they designed around the size of the pump station and the actual approved flows for each lot are significantly different, meaning the approved flows are much lower than what they initially had envisioned for that pump station. What do you mean? Okay. Mm -hmm. You mean that we approved a flow less than what they're actually using? The, the other way around. We the, the, the pump station was designed uh, 
Sorry. Looking at a blank canvas, not knowing what was going in. So they anticipated, they put flow numbers to the various lots. Yeah. And they were conservative on those estimates to make sure that pump, they didn't have to redesign the pump station. Right. So the pump station is one, is able to handle a lot more. Well, what we're seeing is the approved flows that are, what's going into the, these units are a lot smaller wastewater generators than what the original design would have in addition. So in other words, the pump station was designed for 160 gallons per day per lot. What they're building isn't giving all that water, wastewater. And yeah. the lot's being developed, so is it a 10% reduction, 30%? Oh I think we're probably... Let's see, I, I have to look at the numbers. but I bet you're over at least half of them. What the, the where the proof flow was? What the what what the what not the approved flow? What the design flow of the pump station is? Then each lot gets approved first. When they come in front of the board, they get approved for a certain amount of flow, and those flows have been significantly less than what they had envi initially envisioned when they designed the pump station. So, I think that's fair to say that that's probably premature because we're not. Really, where we're at in the infrastructure, right? Well, if well, I may add a little yeah, bit more context to what Dave's saying, so we we're talking—he's talking specifically about Pump Station Twenty Six. Yep. And that direct sewer shed takes Innovation District, a large lot near Payne Road, and actually quite a bit of lots over here, just from a proximity standpoint. So, what Dave is saying is, we, when we went through and designed the pump station sizing for infrastructure, we assumed pretty much the most heavy generated flow we could for each lot just to be conservative. And what we're noticing coming in, and again, I'm, our firm's not doing every one of these site plans, so it's tough for me to kind of speak on the flow because they're coming independently. But from what we've seen to date, they are significantly less than what we've been permitting. So it, it's a good thing from that standpoint that we've oversized yeah. the infrastructure. And, and to that point, actually, that brings up kind of the, the speed of which this may happen. I, I mean, the Innovation District is, is sold out. Um, and basically, there's only four lots that don't have development plans on them currently. So that kind of speaks to, they went for sale in 2019, so in the last <coughs> two years we've been able to do that, or the development team, the development team has been able to do that. Uh, so that kind of speaks to kind of the, how things are progressing faster and a good thing for the town the development team. So, uh, Does that answer your question? Well, <laughs> well no. Uh, well, yes, yes, no, where I was going with it. I, you know, one of the things that I know Dave, you've done in the past is you've done two force spades on certain pump stations. Mm -hmm. So that's why I question, um, you know, how long it's going to take to get that average daily flow. And it was thought about maybe using a smaller force main first and then going to a larger. Doing a dual force main. A dual system. force main, yeah. That's a good thought. I know we had looked at that, and I can't remember what the... Well, we did look at it, and really what it, what it came down to was not... When, when we put the one force main into the... down the hall road here, there's actually limited space when we have guy wires and utility poles, so we really want to be conscious of one pipe going in the ground at the same time. And we're able to work at that from the eight inch force main, it could take the maximum peak within a reasonable velocity, but also from the initial startup of the pump station at 390 gallons per minute, we were able to get the minimum velocities needed as well. So we did look at two different size force mains. In addition to creating, back to this point here, kind of some logistical issues with the discharge piping and having to rework a lot of this system and within the wet well and within the control shed, we decided that the 8-inch force main, ultimately, if it can produce in the initial startup of getting the initial flow, then we would want to, ideally want to do just one force main. And really what kind of helps that is having pump station 26 active and going to it. So it's not just one unit, it's not just, you know, one apartment complex and one senior living facility draining to it initially. We're going to have the flow from pump station 26, which can help get that okay. going. So I, I may have missed that. So, so 26 goes in. Correct. It's going to pump to a, to a terminus manhole here, which right. we're going to keep chasing back as the project develops. Okay. And 20, 
pump station 26 is going to be built when? It's constructed. It's, it's, it's already operating. It's already gone. It's already operating. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right now it's okay. discharging temporarily to another location. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. You, you, you said that. No. <laughs> so I imagine 27 is going to probably just kind of the infrastructure is going to be there and going to be a, a manifold until the rest of the developments there or we're gonna, it's going to go live. Well, actually, thank you for asking that because I did want to mention this is really critical for the development to, 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 get, to, get, right now. to get this in because as you said, this development depends on it and so does the apartment complex from a couple months ago. So we really want to get this thing so we get the wet well and the pumps ordered. We have a little bit of work to do with Dave on the actual configuration of the building and that's, we totally understand that. We're going to work with him on that. We really need to get this infrastructure going because the pumps are like 50 weeks out and the wet well is taking a while. So really critical for the development team to get it in and up and running. We need to have that up and running for these developments, so it will be going with Pump Station 26 pretty much as soon as we can order stuff and get it going. So you're anticipating the timetable by the time the when development's ready, the Pump Station needs to be ready. Correct. It has and to be for us to get occupancy permits. You're anticipating the timetable is going to be about the same for both. Yep. Yeah. The, the, the maximized the um, downstream existing infrastructure uh, with flow. Uh, yeah. You know, on a, a peak, peak design basis, you know, uh, with that's what's driving the need for this yeah. at this point. Yeah, no, that, that was my curiosity question. Because you, you started out with the gray area. Imagine this is where, where the plan was going to be at. So I was kind of wasn't sure if we were going to be anticipating a kind of like a, a stagnant pump station waiting for infrastructure, or if you guys are going to be in need by the time it's ready. So. I don't sure we'll be, I'll be pressed as soon as after uh, an approval to get plans as quickly as possible. So that's thank you. Yeah. Good. 50 weeks on pumps. Yeah, it's a year. Said 50 weeks on a pump. What did I, I, that's a year. I rapidly that's realized that's that. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. So you said 50 weeks, I realized I answered my own question. We did have a question about the capacity. Yep. Because you're seeing pump station 26, not getting, I mean, fully built, but not getting the flow that it was built for. These numbers here, are they designed with the design flow of 26 or the actual flow? Well, and it's been, that's been honestly the trickiest part of this whole pump station sizing is really trying to estimate the flow for a dense development that we have somewhat of an idea of what's going to be built there, but ultimately we really have to look at the zoning and what it allows. So, you know, we have six story zoning allowed, and we have a certain number of density allowed in the downs. And we really want, so we looked at that and kind of years and years in the working of planning a downtown district and ultimately what the development team wants to see there as well for attraction, whether it's single family, whether it's commercial uses. So we went through all that and then like to a degree, we've assigned floor area accounts that you've seen in there and units mm -hmm. to it to actually generate something. So it is a design <laughs> flow to that respect but recognizing that it can change very quickly depending on an end user or a second developer. I don't product. think that was your question. No. Oh, my question, question was, yeah. pump station 26 is designed for X number of gallons. Pump station 27, these numbers here, does that include X, design X, or actual Y? It designs, it, it includes the capacity, the maximum capacity of that, which is Thank you. That's what I'm excited about. I'm so excited about future floor. Well, <laughs> but you did a good job at future floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You answered my next question. That was very efficient of you. All right. <laughs> and thank you for the generator. You know, right. generators. Cool. <laughs> Any more questions for Drew? All right. All in favor? None opposed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Most questions you can I, ask. I, 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 I do have one more quick question. I saw on the news where these three or four guys have this classic vintage car, um, not museum, but Auto car club. Yeah, you, you gotta drive where, over there. The cars are great. Where's where yeah. is that? So if you feel well, if you, it's off the plan here, but if you go down Scarborough Downs Road, the north entrance off Payne Road. Yeah. And you take the first left at the new intersection. Okay. It's actually going to be, it's going to be the building right on your left when you get to the Center Street intersection. So you can imagine it's like right by my finger right here. Okay. It's uh, It's got a balcony. It's kind of a grayish building. It's called the throttle car. car. 
Well, I think it was either Channel 6 or Channel 8 that did something about it. So you, you've been there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You've been there, too? Yes, sir. Have you guys been there? No. Okay. <laughs> 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 I, I actually haven't been there, so I went there. I went there just very good. It's all windows. And, and, and they have some cool cars. Yeah. Yeah. But is it open to the public at all times? You can or? walk in. Yeah. I mean, what? what They'll kick like? you out. <laughs> <laughs> no one even came out and greeted me. You know, I got a little mini tour. Hmm? You got a whole tour? Well, I was going to bring a costume for the day. Yeah. I just wanted to stop oh, by and see. Yeah, Halloween costume. Halloween costume in August. <coughs> thanks thank for, uh, thank you, Drew. Thanks for, yeah, uh, really we have had more questions tonight than we did in two years, but. That's okay. No, no worries. I'll be back. Thank you, everyone. Right. Thank you, thanks, sir. I'm going to develop I'm sure you will. All right. Uh, budget summary. Uh, the 10 month budget summary is in the Motion approved. Second. Any questions for Superintendent? All in favor? I'm going to highlight. Okay, I'll be What's up? I can still read this. Probably tomorrow. Oh, but that's so good. Anyway. Um, sorry. Again, no we get a, we, we're not sitting next to each other. <laughs> we're just missing Audrey right now. Oh, no, really. I spent too bad, dude. Just missed the Audrey days. Um, Dave doesn't see the three of us today. All right. Um, public comments. Any members of the public want to speak? Okay. Trustee comments. We'll start with Joe. I apologize that I uh, missed last month's meeting, everybody. Uh, but uh, as always, you guys continue to keep the goodwill of the uh, district going. Uh, Dave, thank you for uh, having Betsy come in tonight for an HR presentation. It was really nice to see that uh, that, that uh, handbook get updated. Um, and uh, obviously, a lot of great work happening down the district. Um, thank you to the staff, and including the office staff, for uh, keeping things going. A lot of great things happening. Thank you, and uh, I hope everybody has a great and safe Thanksgiving. Excellent. Don't keep frying frozen turkey. Good luck, good turn around. Frying frozen turkey. Frying frozen turkey. Ben? Thank you. Uh, thank you all for your hard work on the budget and presenting us with a, with a really good budget. Appreciate that. And uh, all the other great work that's going on there. those sentiments. I couldn't say it better myself. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Have a great one. Cool. Thank you. Um, I echo everything, but I'll, I'll, I'll say it again. Thanks, Dave, for putting the 2022 budget together. Can you believe 2022? Um, and, and, and to the staff for another great month, and uh, happy Thanksgiving. Well, I can't believe My, my second budget Feel, feels like I've only been on the board for a couple months and yeah. it's been 12. Wow. 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 All right. Well, I'll echo my fellow trustee comments. Thanks to Betsy. Thank you, Dave, for inviting her. And I hope everyone has a happy and safe Thanksgiving. With that, I'll entertain the final motion. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Ben. Second. Thank you, Joe. All in favor? We are adjourned.